The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM. We got about 24 minutes to the start of trading. Quite the day yesterday to the downside. We have Chairman Powell. Uh, he is in there for another term of four years. The market digesting that news looked to be positive territory coming into that. We zoom into the action on the S&Ps yesterday. There's 830. We rally from about 4,700, really about 4,703. We rally up 37 points, almost 40 points uh, to 4,740. 10, 15 a.m., the bell rings in terms of negative action. Opening bell had already been open for 45 minutes. Uh, but we got two sell-offs yesterday from 4,740, down a solid 40 points above where we were, uh, excuse me, below where we were pre-market. And then, man, that sell-off in the last hour from 4,730, down about 50 Five zero points to a low as we approached the close yesterday of about 46.80. And we're sitting basically at that price point overnight. Made it down to 46.54. Things looked a little dicey at about 3.30 in the morning. Over in Europe right now, you have the DAX down three quarters percent. FTSE barely positive. CAC rolled down two tenths percent. Over in Asia, Nikkei barely positive. Shanghai positive by about two tenths percent as well. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100, talk about some selling as well. We were approaching 16,800. We ended the session basically under 16,400. Slightly negative action this morning. We're down about two tenths percent right now, trading at 36. We jumped to the Dow, which is positive, the only major index in the positive right now. And check out the Dow, right? Dow, first sell off, pretty marginal, second sell off. That's an accelerated level. You're talking about 300 plus points in the Dow. All similar levels in terms of all the markets selling off almost 1% in the final hour yesterday. We opened the markets right where we were at that close, though. The Russell negative by one right now. Bitcoin up about 1,000 to 57,000, we'll call it, within 100 bucks or so of that level. Crude, all the talk today. <laughs> Interesting action in terms of uh, the release of oil from the reserves of the U.S. and many other countries as well. And the market says thanks. Uh, but what have you done for me lately? And we're up almost $2. We talked to our man, Teddy Kegstad, uh, tomorrow at 40 past the hour. I'd love to get his take on the action in crude and Forex markets. Uh, quite the volatile session. I mean, you just put this back on a daily, right? Crude, in August, we're trading at 62. We make it up to 84. We've seen quite a decline. Keep your eye on it, though. Right at the 3A2. Interesting, right? healthy pullback folks when you trade up you know twenty three dollars over the period of about two months shouldn't be a drastic recalibration when you get a ten dollar pullback with everything going on but really remarkable uh, that release of the reserves from the U.S., from India, other countries as well. The U.S. is going to release 50 million barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum, Petroleum Reserve in an effort to combat climbing gas prices. It's a short-lived fix, if anything. Uh, in a big way. So you got China, Japan. Uh, let's pull up the article, actually, as we do that. Uh, release U.S. oil reserves in challenge to OPEC plus 50 million barrels from the U.S. from its strategic reserves. Now, they're going to be replaced in 2022, 2023 and 2024. So there's 50 million barrels of buying that is now in the market over the next two years. Biden administration banking on the fact that some of the supply constraints probably fixed themselves over that time. Uh, hopefully that's the case. We, we do not know as of yet. Um, but you have quite a coordinated level. Of that amount, 32 million was going to be released uh, over the next several months. 18 million will come from an accelerated release from previously authorized, authorized sales, they said. Uh, one of the biggest ever in terms of the release, surpassing U.S. Interve interventions amid the Libyan unrest of 2011 and uh, Operation Desert Storm, 1991. And uh, on that, you have oil actually trading higher, which is remarkable. I'm trying to get into some of the other countries in the levels. And I know India was in there with, I think, 5 million barrels. Trying to see if they have those actual numbers for the other countries. Yeah, so you had 33.75 million barrels was the number 
on Operation Desert Storm in 91. So it's quite a release, 50 million barrels. Uh, probably already priced in. And here we go. So India is going to release 5 million barrels. China didn't disclose its contribu contribution, um, but one official said it would be relatively small, 7 to 15 million barrels. Uh, South Korea said it would decide on details such as volume and timing after discussing with partners, but indicated it could be about 3.5. Japan's talking about 5 million barrels. UK contribution expected to be even smaller. Uh, so it looks like the 50 million the U.S. putting in uh, a big chunk of that, to say the least. But man, that crude market, right? Uh, the market knew that was coming, folks. I guess that's the case, or at least they were pricing it in. They knew it was coming. And it's saying probably that's the only reason we traded down to 75 to begin with from 85 was that we knew this is coming already we're back to 78 uh for crude remarkable acceleration uh gold contract continuing to slide quite the slide for gold now you do have a little bit of a pop in the last half hour or so but man gold from the sell-off yesterday on the news of chairman powell getting another term from 1840 down to almost 1800 overnight we're down another 15 bucks to 1791 uh now some of the gold stocks had hold up held up pretty well yesterday i mean you see the sliding gold right i was reading my dad's gold report so yesterday some of the equities uh holding up pretty well in light of the run that gold had let's see if i can jump to some of the just mainstays i mean for instance nem right now it trailed off yesterday but you opened down to and this is just a random one i'm picking to 55 and before you know it, you're back up to 56.50 I mean, you see the bounce in a lot of these equities, right? From 9.30 until 11.30. Now, it's given up some of that as well. But when you compare that, it's a worth noting. You know, you're talking about no real bounce in the gold contract during that time. You were chopping around between 8.15 and 8.20 after trading at 18.50 uh, overnight. So still down about $30 no matter what. The equities clawed back some of it. You had a strong market yesterday, but gold overnight trading even lower, down $14 continuing. And we jump to notes and bonds uh, as the slide continues there as well. We're talking about lower prices and higher yields. Remarkable when you think about where we were on Friday. Uh, quite a sell of 131.08, as you don't often get a point and a half of movement in the tenure just that quickly. And we're talking about a yield of 1.65%. 1.65%. I think yesterday... At about 7 in the morning, we're sitting at about 1.53, I believe. Coming in, we moved to 1.58 pretty quickly on the Powell News. Uh, we're now sitting at 1.65%, and that's after getting a solid six-point bounce off the lows we're at at 8 in the morning. Higher yields coming at you uh, as the market digesting Chairman Powell with four more years. And it seems like more of the talk lately is about the potential to accelerate the tapering, which is has the potential to accelerate when the next rate hike comes. It seems like simple math, folks. If we weren't hearing all the rhetoric from the Fed, maybe, if you had to make a decision without all the noise in the room, and you said with inflation where it is, with the numbers where they are, what's the potential that we hold rates where they are for the better part of at least the next six months? Say, I don't know, six months, that's a long time to be holding rates where they are if this economy it has inflationary tendencies that are pushing dramatic levels on a monthly basis even, let alone year over year, right? I mean, monthly numbers, we got inflation at 0.9%. You're looking at CPI, even the core number is 0.6%. Folks, that's almost double digit inflation on a yearly basis. Doesn't mean it's gonna continue at that trend, but higher yields right now, 1.65%. Stay tuned, folks, we got a lot to go over with Bear Pack. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, negative one point. We got the NASDAQ 100, negative 40, Dow positive by 44. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, fast market, breaking down the day's market action, setting up hypothetical option trades, folks. Uh, trade management, the whole deal, walking you through it. I encourage you to check out the program. We got some good earnings going on this week, uh, along with everything else going on. And Kevin Hinks, we got a new Fed chair that's the same Fed chair. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, you know, I, I'll i be uh, in the camp, like I think a lot of this market, that was a little surprised by that choice. I thought for sure he would go political and go with Lael Brainerd. Um but he didn't. And so um, I think he went with the less disruptive of a choice, but I think Jerome Powell is the right guy. I've told you several times that I thought he's the most effective Fed chair in my career. So, um, yeah, I think that I think for the market, that's the right call. But, you know, interest rates will probably go higher a little faster because he was considered more hawkish than Lael Brainerd. So um, a little less regulation than Lael Brainerd w w would have put in, but maybe a little more hawkish in terms of interest rates. I think that's why you're seeing interest rates climb to 164. I think his mandate is now on the table. So uh, as we go into the you know Thanksgiving week, I was just uh, talking on the TD Ameritrade Network and Normally, I would tell people, hey, the markets are going to get slower into the holidays, so uh, temper your ex expectations. But we're in kind of a new world, Tommy, where machines trade a lot of the markets. So they don't take, uh, you know, Wednesday afternoon off, and they don't go to Grandma's house for Thanksgiving. So <laughs> the machines will be there moving the market one way or another, Tommy. So you do have to keep one eye on the market these days. And we we know Kevin, it might. Um, there's always on those low volume days, you can actually get some real volatility when you don't have as much volume uh, because the influence maybe some of those movements could have if you don't have as many. And I'm thinking especially of the Friday half day, like you're saying, um, there might not 
be as much volume on that day, but sometimes that allows for even more volatility. If there's less players in the market, maybe you meander back to the to the mean when we get back to the office uh, next week after Thanksgiving. But back to the reaction, because I agree with everything you said, and it was interesting how the S&Ps actually traded up. Now, we got two decent sell-offs throughout the day yesterday, about 10 o'clock yeah. and 3 o'clock. Um, but in my head, I was saying there's so many forces that are always in play, right? And I completely agree. It's like, okay, so you have Chairman Powell. Uh, that was definitely up in the air, which was a big variable, right? It's like, who was going to get it? There was a real opportunity for both of them, I would say. And so it was interesting. Right away, the market didn't move that much. And then the market moved up while you had yields rising. And I said, it's really interesting that I think maybe the market was saying, okay, we we have the the known factor of Chairman Powell versus the unknown factor of a new chairwoman, uh, which the market doesn't like uncertainty. So it was interesting. You actually got a higher market, Kevin, with higher yields on that news, right? But then I'd say the yields won out, as in we got a pullback yesterday, and we start the day kind of flat. Uh, it'd be interesting to see where this market goes with higher yields probably coming at us. That could be a good thing, though, um, if this inflationary track, like some say, man, is is kind of heating up. There's a lot more rhetoric sometimes I hear about maybe increasing the tapering, which is kind of interesting when we're so close to when they just announced the tapering. What's kind of your take on that? Because I feel like I'm already hearing whether it's, you know, other Fed presidents or just talking heads um, about the ability to increase the tapering of the asset purchases, potentially lining up a, a rate hike. I mean, we just got that announcement and now it's only November 23rd, and that's already the discussion. Where's your head around that conversation? Yeah, here's what I think about that, Tommy. I think uh, Jerome Powell is probably going to listen to these people and say, thank you for your input, but it's my call. And at the end of the day, uh, it's going to be my name on this recovery of this economy, oh, yeah. not yours. And so I, would, I think Jerome Powell has a game plan, and I think he's going to stick to it. And I don't think he's going to let himself be swayed by a few hawkish or more hawkish like James Bullard sure. uh, from St. Louis that he comes out pretty consistently uh, hawkish. So I think Jerome Powell's biggest mistake that he can make right now is raising interest rates too quickly and dampening this recovery. He's already done the first most of it right, which keeping the markets liquid. Now the biggest mistake he can make when he's all the way to the finish line is to dampen the market too early. So it's I think Jerome Powell is going to wait till he sees the data that tells him not pre-prescribe uh, an action, frankly. And I think that's going to be the coolest part, man. Watching these data points as we come into the holiday season, man, is, is you know, supply chain woes, is that going to be a problem? Is it going to be a problem hiring workers? Could that cause wages? Uh, just a cool time to be a trader in this market, man, with that many variables up in the air. Speaking of variables, we have some companies out with earnings today, man. Best Buy kind of taking a tough one. They're just dropping as I talk to you, Kevin, from 140 to now sitting at 118. Um, some movers today, but they're talking about margins out there as well. Strong numbers for these companies, man, but dealing with some some consistent problems that we're all kind of aware of. Uh, the, the season marches on. What are you guys going to be talking about on the program coming up at noon today, Kevin? Today we got three good ones, Tommy. We're, uh, first segment, we're going to look at Deere & Company, or John Deere, as most people know it. And then we'll look at Pure Retail. J.W. Nordstrom, like Folio, is going to look at Nordstrom. And then Gap, G GPS. So three really good names today. Deere that comes out with tomorrow morning. And uh, Nordstrom and Gap stores comes out after the bell today. Nice. And taking a look at these charts, uh, JWM Nordstrom, we've chatted about it. We chatted about it back in the day when my dad and I were doing the program. Interesting. They have Nordstrom Rack, of course. Then they have Nordstrom. Um, but you could say kind of underperformed Nordstrom. I got the chart sure. up here, man. Going back to the beginning of 2020, pre-pandemic levels, uh, we were sitting at 40 bucks. Now you're sitting at 32. You compare that to something like Macy's. My goodness, you come in at 15, you're sitting at 37. Different stories, of course, but even Gap. Uh, came into 2020 sitting at 17. You're now sitting at 23. Surprising a company like Nordstrom kind of suffering. I like their brand. I do. I shop in, in the Nordstrom rack. Uh, well, Kevin, we look forward to the program as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, and we appreciate the education as always. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. You too, Kevin. Tune in, folks. 
It's a great education every day, 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Higgs, Tom White, they'll be walking you through the three equities, uh, and they'll be setting up those hypothetical trades. And that's the best way to learn, just going through real trade setups and the way they talk about, you know, we all have our biases, folks. You know, do you, do you want to be the buyer of volatility or the seller? Do you want to be the bull on the stock or the bear? Or do you want to have no directional position whatsoever and just be buying and selling volatility? We all can make those estimates in our mind. The cool part is when you transition to set up the trade in the best manner possible to capitalize off of what you think is going to happen in the best way possible, that's when I think you can get the risk rewards in the best manner. Because sometimes, you know, you might be bullish to flat on a stock. Well, yeah, you could sell maybe maybe if there's a ton of volatility in an equity and you're a little bit bullish to a little bit flat, but you don't see a pullback, right? Maybe you're selling a put spread. Maybe you're absorbing all the premium on the bottom side. Now, we talked about Best Buy. We're going to get into Best Buy when we get back. Uh, if you were absorbing the premium on the negative side in Zoom, well, you'd be the one paying all that premium, uh, all that price because Zoom is dropping from 242 to 217. We'll look at Zoom. We'll look at Best Buy earnings when we get back. We'll go over some other equities. Come on back, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, welcome back, folks. We're going to jump right into Dix to start things off. Dix put up some amazing numbers. Remarkable the acceleration they're getting right now to lower prices. 5.3% Dix is down on the open right now. Uh, you got an initial pop. 
higher a little bit on their numbers. Now, taking a look at the context of this move, okay, we're trading at 133. We came into 2020 at 45. Uh, I mean, that trend line is completely intact to the upside. Yeah, you could be bumping along the bottom portion maybe. Definitely got a little bit ahead of itself on the last earnings season. Um, but keep that move in context in terms of where we've been. Now, you put it on the daily, all right, a little bit of a drop off. But again, we're only back to where you were trading at uh, eight days ago on Dick's Sporting Goods. So, well, now call it we're only back to where we were 11 days ago uh, as you drop a bit. But again, some context of the run this has had, even over the period of the last month. Okay, Dix is trading from 120 to 140. Well, now you're at 130. Uh, you are off of the highs of 147. Now, getting into their numbers, okay, and this is just the superficial look of the numbers of a, of a CNBC article versus a real breakdown, okay? But these are the headline numbers. Now, there's more going on in in dicks than the numbers i'm about to give you uh 319 a share versus a dollar 97 they crush it revenue they beat by 10 percent not 2.5 billion 2.75 they beat by 10 percent revenue exactly they had lofty expectations coming into these earnings folks which is why it was so much higher in the three-month period net income 316 million uh from 177 million a year earlier excluding items there's your 319 a share Revenue rose 14% to that 2.75. Uh, they took in 2.41 a year ago. Check out this one. Same store sales, 12.2%. The market was looking for 1.9%. Can you imagine being an executive this morning at, at Dick's and you're, you're trying to hope that you can push the market to see all of these, but uh, they're obviously worried about maybe it's rising costs in the future, maybe it's, it's supply chain woes. There's more going on for sure. Uh, Online sales rose just 1% from a year earlier. That could be a negative. Not sure what the expectation was there. Uh, still up 97% on a two-year basis. So keep in mind, they, they have increased their online sales from last year when the world was still basically operating online. Many stores weren't open. We were only five months into the pandemic. Keep that in context of, of the, the purchases were going on. 97% on a two-year basis, they're selling e-commerce sales. About one out of five dollars that they take in is e-commerce, up from 13% in 2019. As sales have accelerated and new customers have shopped its website, uh, Dix is invested in the business. Uh, yeah, and they raised their outlook. So they expect to earn 1288 to 1306 per share on sales of 12.12 to 12.19 after adjustments for covid related expenses it's going to earn 1460 to 1480 a share previously they were looking for earnings between 1245 and 1295 right so they jack up the earnings they jack up the sales uh analysts have been looking for fiscal 2021 adjusted earnings per share of 1313 so i guess that's the problem there they're coming in at 1288 to 1306 i mean all of those taken together seems like a company that shouldn't be down 7.3 percent so there's more going on there for sure let's jump to best buy now best buy watch out down 14 percent. you give back more than just a few days of best buy quite a different story here on best buy shares check this out you just give back in terms of best buy is now trading at where you were trading at 15 months ago so much for the breakout not so quick we get over to best buy declining gross margin this was the story with target and with walmart you're seeing the biggest of the big having problems here keeping their margins when they're dealing with higher wages higher costs of goods sold uh gross margin yeah and as they say i hadn't even pulled it up walmart and target um best buy said in a statement gross margin fell 0.1 percentage points talk about being tough uh 23.5 percent the market was looking for 23.6 and you're down 15 uh, percent i think they think that things might be worse going forward folks the company cited the lapping of low levels of discounts product damages and returns last year along with more items lost to theft and other mishaps uh yeah they're down dramatically struggling to shore up gross margins after a recent stock surge raised wall street's expectations pullback in best buy shares um yeah big rally seven weeks so much for that earnings rose to a 208 compared with a buck 96 i mean the remarkable thing here is and we better you better be paying attention folks is that they're beating on earnings they're beating on revenue and stocks are trading down seven seven to fifteen percent 
that's not a good scenario for the market. Uh, you get the S&Ps down 10 points right now. You take a look at the S&Ps, very real threat that you're breaking out of that uptrend channel. Now, we had been in this channel well-defined from May of this year and the S&Ps up to September. You break lower, couldn't believe that we got back in that channel line. You know, when you're down here, you think though about the possibility of getting back in that channel line, we potentially get a double top here, all right? Now, this is a daily. You're looking at November 5th. We trade to a high of 47.11. We trade up to 47.40. You get quite a tail there on yesterday's action. I mean, it's always remarkable, folks, that there are sometimes events that have these peaks, okay? We found a new Fed chair in the same Fed chair, uh, Chairman Powell, getting another four years yesterday. The market loved that for a moment until it looks like it's begun pricing in that we are going to get higher yields to the tune of which we're pushing 1.65% right now. You heard Kevin Hinks' take, and I agree with it completely. He is data-driven. He's not going to get ahead of anything. My estimate, though, that might differ from Kevin just a little is that I think the data might force him in the next five months. And we're going to find out. Uh, but if we see CPI numbers that are pushing like 0.9% month over month for three months, uh, you might see the yields rise a bit. And if you start seeing the market pushing those yields up, forcing that action a bit, it just might have to happen. I mean, if you're seeing that type of an inflationary environment, folks, you could see those yields start to rise. It would make sense. And if you see those yields start to rise, it's going to be a lot harder for Chairman Powell to stay at zero till June of next year. It's a long time with a lot of data to come uh, through June of next year. I imagine he waits for that data. But at some point, the data just might force his hand. And I think we all know that. And that's what's cool about being a trader. So we're going to get some really interesting data that could move the market in a big way. Now, you want to talk about inflation. This is a perfect segue. I had it teed up. How about 25% inflation? No more dollar. Dollar Tree, they're going to be known as Dollar 25 Tree. Now, they're not going to be known as Dollar 25 Tree. They're still going to be Dollar Tree, but they're going to sell things at a Dollar 25. 25%. 25 no wonder that stock uh, had been pushing higher on the news. There you go. Yeah, hadn't even pulled it up today. Uh, now, this stock, right, really had begun accelerating already. They came out with their earnings. Is that today? Yeah, they're out with the earnings today. The market loves that idea. Now, I forget which, I think this was the news that they were probably going to have different, maybe pricing structure. There were a couple of news. Maybe there's an activist investor pushing them. Um, I think it was here. There's a couple of news stories. All of it has to do with Dollar Tree raising their prices. And they just traded from 84 bucks to 140 <whistles> What is that? 60, 70% pop in the stock over that period of time. Uh, remarkable that they're going to be able to get away with a 25% price hike. It's like across the board, 25%. And they're saying, well, yeah, they haven't, they've been selling them for 35 years at a dollar. Of course they have. That's their store. That's what they do. Not anymore. $1.25. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And just like that, we got markets back in positive territory. A little bit of a quick pop there. Back to a five-minute chart in the S&P. Zooming in on today's action, we make uh, right out of the gate. 925, we're lower. 930, we're lower. But things turn around at 935. And since then, we've bounced solid 15 points in the S&Ps. And we're actually above anywhere we were since about 5 a.m. Eastern time. NASDAQ 100, a little bit of a bounce as well. Dow positive by 15. Russell positive by 1. Uh, let's check out some of the FANG stocks real quick, see how we're trading. you got Tesla up 1.4 percent right now amazon been particularly volatile this week amazon coming into black friday always a big event for them up 1.2 percent uh we jumped to facebook shares down four tenths percent right now microsoft shares down eight tenths apple going to be coming out with self-driving cars in about three years i kid that's what they say uh apple up to 165 yesterday you're trading right now at 160 volatile as well for apple shares uh jumping back to dollar tree so dollar tree Look at that pop up another 5.6 today, 5.6% today. Uh, just jumping back to that article real quick, because folks, if if you can raise prices on the very cheapest of retail, which is the dollar store, then you can basically raise it anywhere, right? Because if people are chopping a Dollar Tree, they're usually pretty price conscious, going to the store, loving the bargains, loving the dollars. Uh, Dollar twenty-five just doesn't have the same ring as a dollar. But what do they say? The company recently rolled out the higher prices in select stores. Wanted to make sure uh, everything wasn't going to collapse. No, it didn't collapse at all. Uh, those tests have demonstrated broad consumer acceptance of the new price point. And they plan to bring it to more than 2,000 additional stores in December and complete the rollout by the end of the first quarter in fiscal 2022. 2,000 stores in December. They're getting there by holiday season, folks. 25%. Uh, in a big way as that trades higher. Okay, jumping around to what else we got going on. Let's check back to some of the stocks that had their earnings. I want to see how Dix is moving. Pfft, down 8.5%. I went over the numbers. Strong numbers for Dix. Uh, you look at that stock, not that dramatic of a pullback. I mean, you can make the, the trend line, right? It lines up pretty well along the bottom portion of these trends. Still intact, but pretty much bumping up against that level. I mean, it's an art, not a science, folks. Where do you match up along the bottom? I like to do a little bit of almost linear regression, right? Making sure that you're kind of catching them all. You're going to have a little bit of the peaks that might not reach the line. You're going to have a little bit of the peaks that just might cross over the line. That seems like a little, a pretty fair representation of the bottom of that channel line of dicks, and you're bumping right up against it. Uh, that could be an area at least you could set your, your trade. If you're wrong, you get out. You don't give yourself much room. Uh, you know, maybe you see a trade down to 110. Just keep that in mind. And I don't think I'd set a stop that far uh, because you hit 110. You'd be below the level on October 11th, but you're coming back to some huge volume when they had their last earnings to the upside. 
and you're giving it back three months later, nothing to say that you might give it back. If that's what you traded higher on earnings, you could trade lower on earnings just as the same. We jump over to Best Buy. Quite a different story for Best Buy. No uptrend channel there. We had a consolidation going on for the better part of 15 months. Best Buy down 15 plus percent right back to that consolidation. Some big, big pullbacks there for Best Buy. And they had some decent numbers as well. Uh, but talking about margins, margins, slight miss on margins. Uh, that's a big one. And I imagine they have more going on for Best Buy as well. All right, jumping down the line for other stocks that are moving. Uh, getting into Zoom. So again, right, the headline is beat estimates by two cents a share, but slowing growth, Awari, for this one. Uh, they called off their planned $15 billion acquisition during the quarter uh, for 5.9, exceeded analyst estimates and issued better than expected guidance. But guess what? Not so much. Uh, buck 11 versus buck 09, they barely beat. 1.05 versus 1.02, that's a barely beat. Revenue increased 35%. From a year earlier and the one that mattered the most in here is growing the larger companies that are really paying a big chunk i mean you can use zoom for free what they need to do is they need to get corporate customers that are going to be paying them a big number uh Yeah, so revenue growth was above 300% as recently as the quarter that ended in January. Now Zoom has reported its slowest growth since at least 2018 um, before the 2019 public offering. Yeah, and here we go. So Zoom is reckoning with decelerating decelerating growth because of so many businesses made their purchases last year. Uh, I talk about one of my best friends is in the credit card processing business up in New York. Uh, they process about a billion dollars plus a month of credit card processing. They went to Zoom kind of during the pandemic they had been with another company they got sold on it there they they have somewhere over 100 employees something like that They're, they had people at home they have two offices they have one in new york they have one in florida um, for some redundancy issues making sure that they're always up and they are using zoom but guess what they signed up last year okay those companies you were probably making those decisions last year right if you didn't sign up last year as a company when you were getting your online business in order you probably not signed up this year because you probably made sure that that process was in place when you needed it most last year. Uh, Zoom is a strong company, folks. I do have some Zoom in a retirement account for some long-term uh, position because in the long term, it's nice to get a growth company that's taken in a billion dollars over their quarters and is profitable. That's the real key here. You have a growth company that's profitable, but you're gonna see some volatility and you're seeing it. Remarkable this thing's traded as low as it has. Zoom said that over 2,500 customers are spending more than $100,000 a year, up 94% from the same period a year earlier. Um, yeah, they talk about 5.9 in there as well. But they are not growing the customers to the degree that they need to. And you're seeing it in the stock down 16%. Uh, you had a period there that Zoom really broke out. Now, they broke out in the pandemic. But this is getting, I don't want to call it silly, but you're at 200 bucks, folks. And at 100 bucks, you're back to pre-pandemic levels. Zoom might not be benefiting as much as the market anticipated during the pandemic, but it certainly has benefited. And you came into 2020 at 75. You had a period of time that you were sloshing around at about 100. Uh, the market really took off basically April 6th, the week of, when you're trading at 108. And over the period of about six months, you almost pushed 600 on this equity. Um, but this is getting to a point that if you're looking to get into Zoom, um, you know, it's tough to, to buy it here because it was basically a one-way straight shot from 140 to 205, but maybe you start to slide into it because anywhere it gets back to 100 bucks, and I would be buying that equity in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's a 50% pullback, but you've just pulled back from 600 to 200, so keep your eye on that. Uh, and with that said, look at this market. S&Ps, back to the short-term time frame, catching a bid. We're at 46.90 right now. Now, interesting, you're bumping up. So yeah, right where we were to end Friday's action, 46.90. Uh, you know, you take back all the acceleration to higher prices on Monday, you take back the sell-off, you take back the volatility this morning, and the market is right back to where we were at the close of Friday. I mean, you're almost sitting at record territory, folks. Record territory is 47.40 that we were at yesterday morning. Um, this is really kind of a consolidation near the top here that we've been in basically since November 5th.
right? The market sells off in September, it really reverberates back to higher prices in October. That acceleration continues through the better part of the early part of November. And since then, we've just been chopping around about 4,700 to the upside of the S&Ps. All right, jumping over to the VIX. As we get a higher market, we got a VIX was above 20, back under that level, 1916 now on that VIX. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right, right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, positive by 11. And who do we have on the phone? We got my dad on the phone. What's going on? Good morning. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, man? Good. I had to get in this inflation talk because, oh, you know, boy. so check this out. This, I mean, that 125 is amazing, right? Right. And I know that, you know, yeah, we are in the stock market, okay? But I, what I think people should do, there's a, we've never been in this area, okay, for 30, 35 years. So there's a huge amount of money to be made on really understanding what you have in your garage, what is out there on sale, you know what I'm saying? That you know, people should pay attention to because that upcharge, you know, I can tell you in the housing business is right across everything. So picture, you know, there's windows that have been out there someone's had, okay? I, I'm just throwing this out here though. You know, there's bread to be made, ought to be saved. 
um, that is very common sense wise, which is pretty cool, man. I mean, we, we haven't had something like this happen. Do you know what I'm saying? You have so, you have someone that thinks something is worth you know twenty dollars. Well, guess what? It's really worth forty dollars. Right. Like you, maybe you get it at twenty five dollars, which is pretty cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, definitely, especially I something wanted- that depending on the inputs, right? I mean, it came to my mind almost, yeah. you know, a nice grill or something like that, an old Weber grill, right? Maybe something like that. That's totally. like, man, that's a, a hardcore exactly. steel. Those and are always valuable, but yeah, something like that, man. Those are probably going up big time, everywhere. right? Yeah. And everyone can do it. And sure. the, you know what the difference is? The difference in this trade, folks, is that you are the market. <laughs> that's the difference sure. in the trade, which is pretty cool. You know what I mean? It is. You're not going to go make thousands, okay? But the bottom line is that um, it's a very efficient way of uh, basically, whether you're fixing up your house, whether you're doing another project, uh, there, there's, there's real bread that's sitting everywhere right now, period. I think and the Dollar cool. Tree, like you said, man, that one, it's like, if if those are the most price conscious shoppers out there, I think, because they're going to a store that yeah. literally has the price in the name, dollar, and they said, yeah, raise them 25% and no, no big deal. All right, man, we appreciate and, the call. Good to okay. talk to you. Love you. I love you. We'll see you at 3 o'clock okay. today. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Bye, man. Great, bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. We got our man Larry Pesavento at 11, Fast Market at 12, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Market's higher, folks. Interesting action. Stay tuned for Basil. He's coming up right now.